Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 122, and for this one, I play in a massive game. I get into the biggest pot that I've ever gotten into, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. This is the last vlog of a live poker session that I played uh, before everything went down. From this point forward, I'm going to be probably making content based around uh, an app I've been playing called Poker Bros. I've seen you guys on there. You guys have been after my Bradley dollars. Some of you have gotten them, some of you have not, but it's been a lot of fun. It's been a cool way to uh, stay in contact with you and kind of host basically online versions of meetup games. So uh, if you're interested in playing with me on there and Andrew, I have more information down below in the description box. Um, another, another cool thing that happened with me uh, since the last time I checked in with you is that the channel hit a big milestone across the 200,000 subscriber mark thanks to you and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing and sticking around through the last three and a half years. It's been a blast for me. Um, but yeah, it was a super exciting moment and I actually have a clip of when it happened. I feel like you don't even care, Marvin. I wasn't able to celebrate quite as much as maybe I normally would under regular circumstances, but uh, the last couple years have been a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy going back and forth with you guys in the comment section or on social media, and especially, especially meeting with you guys and hanging out at the meetup games. That's been probably the most fun. Um, I feel like it's a big community, and lately a lot of us are finding ourselves in one of two situations. Either we're in a position to help others out, or maybe through no fault of our own necessarily, we're in need of, of assistance. Um, I was trying to think about different things that I could do, and I put out a tweet saying I was going to give $200 to one of your guys' favorite dealers, and right away it became apparent that there are a ton of people out there who are worthy of recognition that are in the poker industry, um, whether, whether it's a, a dealer who is um, working on the job and trying to do the best they can to make us laugh, or maybe they're creating content on the side and uh, keeping us entertained, or maybe they're just doing the best job that they can in the poker room, that way they can get some tips and go back home and support their families. So I was kind of stressed out about picking just one person. That's when you guys came in and saved the day. A ton of you messaged me saying that you wanted to donate and contribute to the fund. About a thousand dollars was raised just from you. And uh, that really inspired me and hearing all the dealer stories did too. So I decided that I could up my contribution and I donated $2,000 of my own money. Altogether, we had $3,000 and I gave 10 different dealers $300 each and it was really, really cool. They were super appreciative. The communication that I had back and forth with them just kind of solidified it that they were definitely deserving uh, candidates. Um, and that's not where it stopped. Uh, Tony Miles messaged me privately. He said that he wanted to contribute and give three different dealers Amazon gift cards and he ultimately gave four and then another person reached out and wanted to give another $150 to uh, three different dealers so they got they got $50 each. Altogether about $3,500 was raised and uh, distributed and it's just something that I'm that I thought was like super super cool and I definitely want to do more stuff like that in the future. If you guys are interested in helping me out with anything then uh, let me know. Uh, my email is bradowen4 at gmail.com. Uh, just shoot me over an email and, and we'll figure out something to do together to take care of the poker community. All right, let's go ahead and get started on the video. We're going back to where it all began, the Red Rock in Las Vegas. It's the location of my very first poker vlog. I still consider it the home court. I spent more time and won more money here than any other property. If you're buying into the 2-5 game for a thousand, which is the maximum, I take my seat and I'm greeted by a few of my buddies, Jake and Jeff. If you've been a long time viewer, you might recognize them from the second video that I ever put out. It's nice to know that some things never change. In the first interesting hand, I pick up pocket nines under the gun, I open to 15. Under the gun plus one calls, under the gun plus two calls, the cutoff calls, and the big blind calls. With this many opponents, I'm not going to be taking a stab at the flop unless I completely smash it. And luckily I do, it's ace nine seven with two diamonds, we have middle set, and we're up against four opponents. Since we didn't get three bet preflop, it's safe to assume that we essentially have the nuts, the big blind checks, someone's likely to have an ace or a draw of some sort, that can call a bet, or perhaps we'll even raise if I bet. I make it 50. Somehow no one has anything, the opponents all fold. Shortly after, a rec player suggests that we make the game uncapped. We all agree, not having any idea how much this is going to impact us later on. Here I've got ace king offsuit in middle position, I open to 15. The hijack calls, the big blind three bets to 80, 
I've seen him get a little squirrely three betting preflop prior to this. And I'm at the top of my range, so I four bet to 225. The hijack folds, the big blind calls. Maybe this time he actually has a hand. We're heads up. The flop is 10 6 5 rainbow. The big blind checks. Down betting or checking both seem reasonable. I check. That makes my hand somewhat face up. The turn is another six. The big blind leads for 140. He's hooked a big fish and is now reeling it in. I call. The river is another five. I'm hoping the big blind will check and we can maybe chop this. Nope. The big blind fires again, this time for 450. Of the hands that I imagine the opponent would call a four bet with pre flop, I'm either chopping or losing. It's usually not a good idea to call a bet when the best outcome is a chop, even though in this case, I think it's very likely. Almost regardless of what the big blind has, I like how he played it. I give up and fold. This particular opponent has been showing his cards all night when he was bluffing, so he didn't do it this time. I imagine he had something better than ace king. I'm only stuck 275, but since the game's uncapped, I had on for a thousand more. After running cold for a while, I'm dealt ace five suited in the cutoff. Under the gun straddles for 10, I raised to 35. The under the gun player defends his straddle. This is the same opponent that I faced in the previous hand. We're heads up. The flop comes queen six three with two spades. Good flop, we've got a flush draw, one over, and a backdoor straight draw. Under the gun checks, I bet 35 again. The player calls, the turn is the king of spades. We've got the nuts. Under the gun checks, I'm looking to build this pot. I bet 105, targeting hands that are towards the top of my opponent's range, like king, queen, or smaller flushes. Lots of hands that the under the gun player might have called a flop bet with, with pocket sevens, eights, or nines, are gonna have a hard time calling a bet no matter what. It's not gonna have many top pair holdings in this range either. The player folds, we win it, and this is when things really start to get interesting. A new player comes in from the blackjack table and sits in the one seat with over $40,000. Those orange chips are 5Ks, he's got eight of them. Never seen anyone sit in 2 5 with close to that much. That'd be a ton for even a 50 100 no limit game. Money's clearly not a concern for this guy. Supposedly, he came in the week before and lost 30,000 in 510. If you run good against him, you can win piles. If not, he can absolutely torch you. He's opening to 75 and calling all kinds of three bets. That's what happens in this hand with my buddy Jake. Jake three bet to 300 pre flop from the small blind, got called, flop top set, then eventually gets it all in against the one seat's pocket fours that turn to straight. Jake still has some outs, the board pairs, or if any spade other than the six of spades comes out. The river is the 10 of hearts though. My buddy gets stacked. These are the types of hands that can be devastating against rich patients that escape from the loony bin. The dude is a nut. Next, I've got 10 six of diamonds in the big blind. Jake opens from under the gun to 15. Under the gun plus two calls. Cutoff calls, that's the one seat. It's 10 more to me. I've got a suited three gapper. You won't find that in the premium hand section of any poker book, but I'm getting five to one and everyone's deep. I call, we go four ways to the flop, it's jack nine eight rainbow, we've got an open ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. I check, cutoff doesn't care that there are two opponents to act before him, he bets 100 out of turn. Under the gun and under the gun plus two check, so the bet stands, I figure if I can hit a straight I might be able to double up from the one seat. I call, Jake calls, under the gun plus two folds, we go three ways to the turn, it's a four, we don't improve. I check, Jake checks, the cutoff takes out a 5k chip and announces a bet of 300. It's too much for me, especially with Jake behind me. I have no idea what he has. I fold. Jake announces that he's all in for 885 total. Without too much hesitation, the one seat puts in another 5K chip to signify a call. Uh, you're ahead. The river is a king. Jake turns over pocket queens and has the winner. That's good. The one seat mucks without showing, but says, No wonder my queen didn't come. He must have a 10 as well. After another cold run, I pick up king jack offsuit under the gun. We're playing seven handed, and the one seat is straddled on the button. Ordinarily, I'd fold this. Here, I raised to 30. I have good card removal and should get a lot of respect, opening from early position, especially after not getting many playable hands. I really want to get involved against the button, who already has money invested in the pot. I've noticed that when no one raises preflop, the one seat will make it 75, but if someone does raise a 20 or 30, he never three bets. The button calls, so I suspected he would. He could have any number of trash hands that are worse than mine. The small blind also comes along. He's a newer player that seems to be a pro. We go three ways to the flop, it's ace, nine, three, all hearts, we get the nut flush draw. Not only is this a decent flop in my actual hand, it's good for my perceived range as an early position pre-flop raiser. Small blind checks, I bet 55 is a semi-bluff. The button folds, small blind calls, we're heads up. The turn is the eight of diamonds. Small blind checks, I have the nut blocker and a good draw still. I bet 120 to continue the story that I have a strong hand like a flush, a set of aces or nines, or ace king or ace queen. Small blind skeptical and rightfully so, he calls, the river is the four of clubs, we don't make a flush, small blind checks, not exactly sure what he's gonna have and don't know if he'll fold to a third barrel. I surrender and check back. He turns over ace jack offsuit with a jack of hearts. He wins it, 
We're hours into the session, and I'm beginning to get a little frustrated that I'm not getting much to play with, can't make big hands in good spots. Meanwhile, the one seed has stacked the nine seat twice. Once the one seed called an overbet jam for a thousand on a nine six three rainbow flop with jack 10. He was up against pocket kings, but it didn't matter because the board ran out with a queen on the turn and one of the last two kings on the river. He backdoored it straight to crack a set of cowboys. It's one of the strangest and sickest hands I've ever seen. The other time, the one seat had pocket jacks, got it in for about a thousand effective against the nine seats jack 10 on a 10 high board. The one seat held and is crushing. Here I'm dealt ace-10 offsuit under the gun to similar situations the last time in that I have an okay hand. It's one that I wouldn't ordinarily play from this position, but the one seed is straddled. He'll call with way worse hands, and I want to tangle with him. It's actually a little easier for me to play out of position since when I'm in position and he gets involved, he's usually raising to 75. I wasn't planning on playing a game this big. I've been going back and forth in my mind on whether to add on or not. Without having tons of money on me, my thinking is that it's best to try and win a big pot with my stack as it is. That requires me to play tighter when he's opening to such big amounts. It's as if I'm short stacking in a 10-25 game. Back to this hand, I raised a 30. The button once again just calls for 20 more. The big blind also calls. We go three ways to the flop. Comes king 8 five, all hearts again. We've got the flush draw, one over, and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind checks. I bet 50. That gets rid of no one. The button calls. The big blind also calls. I'm worried the big blind might be laying in the weeds with a strong hand. The turn is the six of diamonds. The big blind checks. I slow down and check. The button also checks. The river is the six of hearts, giving me a flush. There's a possibility that one or both players could have a better flush. The big blind checks again. He probably wouldn't do that with a hand that's beating me once it checked through on the turn. I have a decision to make. I could bet, but I prefer to check and give the button an opportunity to bluff at it if he has a worse hand than me. If he has a better hand than me, he'll be calling or raising my bet anyway. That's what I do. I check. The button takes the bait. He bets 200. The big blind goes into the tank. I wonder if somehow he does have a big hand. Nope. He folds. I immediately reach for chips to call as everything has basically gone according to my plan on the river so far. The one seat turns over 5-4 offsuit with no heart. He's aware that I'm filming for the vlog. He's cool enough to push his cards closer to the camera so that you guys have a better view. I finally won a decent sized pot. It's not huge. Still, I'm only stuck 400, and this is a massive game. One big pot away from being up a large amount. Now I've got King Queen suited in the cutoff. Under the gun plus one is the Maniac. He deviates from a standard 75 preflop raise and lowers it to 50. I'm not sure if there's any significance to this. I finally have a reasonable hand to play in position against him, and I call. I'm pumped up. My buddy Jake ruins my excitement a little. C3 bets to 175 from the button. Under the gun plus one calls. I'm getting over three to one with a fairly strong hand. I call, hoping that I can crush the flop one time and finally capitalize on the situation. The dealer puts out ace nine four rainbow. I brick it. Under the gun plus one checks. I check. Jake bets 175 again. Under the gun plus one folds. I can't stick around. I fold. This has not been a very fun session for me up to this point. If I can make a hand, I should be able to win piles, but the cards aren't cooperating. I feel like I'm in a candy store and not allowed to eat anything. I'm just watching other people eat as they're eating Sour Patch Kids, which is my favorite. It's been over four hours since I sat down and I'm stuck about 700. To fully take advantage of the situation, I need to stop being a little bitch and embrace the variance that could come with adding on. I get 1,700 more in chips. I'm in for 3,700 total. I don't have much left in my wallet, but I've got about 3K in front of me. I need to hit the God Mode switch. With a little luck, I can potentially have one of the biggest wins of my life. Lo and behold, less than 10 minutes after buying the chips, I pick up Pocket Queens in the hijack. The one seat opens to 75 from under the gun. Under the gun plus one calls. This is the first really good spot that I found myself in since the one seat sat down. I three bet to 275. Under the gun, would rather check himself back into the loony bin than let his cards go. He did not come here to fold. He calls. Under the gun plus one calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. One time, please let me make a set. The dealer puts out 10 three deuce with two diamonds. We don't make a set, but it's a pretty good flop without hitting one. The opponents check to me. I bet 400. The one seat doesn't think too long before he slides in seven orange ships. Good for a raise to 35,000. Yeah, that's going to have us all covered. Under the gun plus one quickly folds. It's 2350 more to me, and there's about 4,000 up for grabs in the middle. In a split second, my mind recaps all the times that I've seen him get it in. Only once did he ever have a hand stronger than one pair. He called a check raise jam against Jake with a straight draw on the turn. He called an overbet jam with only jack high and a backdoor draw against another player. And he overbet jammed with jacks on a 10 high board. Could have jacks again here. Could have a flush draw or hand even as bad as ace 10. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him play five forward this way. So I'm thinking, I hear him say, Tough spot. Not really. I've been looking forward to a hand like this with you all night. I call, and as soon as I do, the one seed turns over pocket tens. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
Wow. He's got the nuts. My heart sinks as I'm thinking about the situation. I'm playing the biggest pot of my life immediately after adding on against one of the wildest opponents I've ever played against. I'm drawing nearly dead. It's a perfect storm. This seems like a good opportunity to use at one time. The turn is the eight of hearts. I was hoping it'd at least be a diamond to give me more outs. The river is the nine of hearts. In the last session that I played before all the casinos shut down. I don't even get to cash out and I have one of the biggest losing days I've ever had. All right, well, just got wrecked as soon as I add on for um, 1,700 more, get into an interesting situation with a guy who just doesn't care about money, and uh, I don't know if I could have done anything different there. I mean, I guess I just could have folded, but um, against that guy, I saw him do some crazy, crazy things. He got it in with Jack-10 on a nine high board and uh, backdoored a street against somebody, he got it in with jacks on a 10 high board for piles of cash. And uh, so I thought he might be the one person that I could beat in that spot. I thought maybe he could have diamonds or a variety of other things. Um, unfortunately, he had the goods, he had the nuts, and uh, I had a pretty good hand myself. So it's a big game, but yeah, I lost 3,700 in four and a half hours or so. Didn't really feel like playing, figured it'd be my last session for a long time, and yeah, I just got crushed. So, um, gonna just head home now and maybe cry a little bit. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments section. I'm happy to get back to you. Um, I got just absolutely destroyed in that session, and it was rough because it was the last one before uh, basically all the casinos shut down. I didn't really feel comfortable playing anymore. There was only like a few more days that I could have anyway. And it's always nice to just take a break after you lose $3,700 and have one of the biggest losing sessions of your life. Uh, luckily, I was running well leading up to that session. I'd won over 18,000 in the previous 35 sessions, which was great. I was kind of due for something, uh, something like that to happen, but it's never too fun. Going forward, I'm gonna have to get creative with the content. I have a few more ideas for videos, and I think I'm gonna get into doing streaming of the Poker Bros app. If you wanna play with me on there, then there's more information in the description box below. And if you wanna help out, um, help take care of some people in the poker community, I encourage you to do so either on your own or send me an email. It's bradowen4 at gmail.com. Uh, hopefully I'll hear from you soon, and uh, we can all get through this thing together. So. Stay safe, good luck at the virtual tables, and I'll see you soon. Bye. There's a lot of deals here in Las Vegas and all over the world that unfortunately is not working. And $300 goes a long way to helping us, you know, ease the pain that a lot of us are going through right now. So once again, thank you again, Brad Owen. And I hope, uh, even though I've never ever dealt to you, I hope one day you can come by to the poker room that I work at, sit down in my in the little low limit game I deal, and uh, hope I deal some really good hands.